YoPPOptionMillionaires.com on the Saturday, December 5th, 2015. Look at this. We have Mario Draghi on Thursday. Before the bell, not doing what the market thought he was going to do, the ECB was going to do. And we had the stock market pulling back in dramatic fashion. A $5 reversal on the SP500 ETF, the Spiders. So we have the central bank not doing what the market thinks they're going to do, or central bank action or lack thereof, leading to a swoon for stock prices. And then, before the bell yesterday, we had the jobs report come out. So we have data pushing stocks higher. We have central banks pushing stocks lower. It's the exact inverse of what we've been seeing since the lowest March 2009, where every single central bank comment is viewed as a opportunity to ramp stocks. Well, that was the exact opposite. We saw Mario Draghi has lost his magic touch. But the baton has been handed off to the jobs report, which came out not too hot, not too cold. Just right. That delicious porridge they always talk about uh, with the jobs report. Let's look at some charts. Look at Solar City started the week off under 30, jboptionmillionaires.com. Got some $33 calls. Who? I mean, how crazy are you to get calls that are $5 out of the money a week before they expire? Well, crazy is good in this option market where we got some tremendous squeezes this week. Solar City did not only break $30 a share, a $2 move off the lows, but moved up to near $38. $38. Those uh, $33 options at $0.35 cents that were purchased the week before actually went up to almost $5 by the end of the week. Incredible move. We saw an incredible move into the close for Fit, Fitbit. Uh, similar type squeezes. We saw a lot of stocks this week. Look at Fitbit closing at $33.37. Again, started the week uh, under the $30 level. Uh, we had some moves to record highs for Amazon. Now let's pull up Amazon here. Uh, you can look, uh, broke down at almost 660 level on Thursday. Look at that. And then had a nice reversal, although it did not follow the market as much as you would think. Only up uh, a little less than 1% yesterday, but hit new all-time record highs in the middle of the week. And that was kind of the top for the market. Uh, look at Google, similar type highs there on Wednesday, 792. Uh, pulled back to 764. So we saw some tremendous reversals from the highs there. A near $30 reversal. Look at that, down to 762 on Thursday. And then if you bought that dip, the two-faced market, we had to pull back on Thursday. You bought that dip, you got an $18 move to the upside. Tesla lag yesterday. Energy as a whole was pretty nasty this week. You see Tesla broke to 238, but even yesterday, uh, in spite of the bullishness we saw in the market, kind of mustered a, uh, you know, anemic performance. Apple on the flip side soared, especially, uh, look at that reversal we had from the, the Thursday sell-off. A uh, really started, started a week, 119.3. We closed pretty much right where we started the week. We've seen a lot of that throughout 2015. I got into the 117 calls on Thursday, about uh, right over here. And if you look at the action down to 114, you thought those 117 calls were just done. Toast, but it was like the Walking Dead episode. Uh, you would think the person is dead, and suddenly they come back to life. And those 117 calls that I got at 43 cents went to $2.05 at the close. A 500% gain. So, <laughs> you know, you can't give up some of these weekly options. Also, the VXX. Uh, on Thursday, the VXX was busy spiking, my goodness, and at about here, 1940, I got some $19 puts. And then, of course, the VXX soared, closed its session highs. 2032, and those $19 puts were worth mere couple pennies. And uh, then we got the jobs report on Friday, a massive ramp. Now, it didn't look good at the start because you look at a spike for the VXX, look when the market opened, VXX was going to spike back over 20. But that has been like a, a, you know, a little wall there for VXX. We'll go back to that in a second. But if you look, look at where VXX closed, 1821. So we made some money there on those VXX puts after uh, looking rather bleak into the close on Thursday. That 120 level has been pretty spot on for the VXX, uh, that 20 level. And you can see if you just cap it across numerous times over the last, especially since the summer, uh, besides you erase this. Yeah, we can erase all of those massive spikes to the upside. Uh, the 20 level has been pretty tough nut to crack. So that looks rather bullish to me if we break down. Support here has been 18, so we'll see next week. That's going to be interesting to watch. I know VXX is not an instrument people watch. Uh, more likely to look at the VIX, but the VIX got a similar kind of support pattern here. You want to look at 14, you go back to 14. Uh, earlier this year, uh, it was really stuck in the middle of that. Now it's been acting as support after the collapse that we had, or the spike in the VIX and the collapse in stocks in the summer. So we look at this, this level here, 14 for the VIX coming this week. We can break below it. Uh, that's going to uh, set up the market for move to new all-time record highs. Go figure. Is that is something we were talking about uh, back in the summer? Not me. No, I didn't think so. Heck no. We had this beautiful bottom here that turned out to be completely 
robust buying opportunity. Uh, so we look at resistance here. If you bring it a, a trend line across, this is going to be the tough nut to crack. Uh, you could bring it, bring a trend line right across here. This 2100 level, we got up to it earlier this week. If we can break above it, again, we're setting ourselves up for new all-time record highs. Uh, if you go back three years, you can see the 2011 correlation that we've been talking about. Let me go back a little further so you can see it more clearly. If you go back to 2011, we had a similar type pullback. Okay, see the pullback? We had this couple months of consolidation that actually occurred in the uh, fall months, the September, October, and then ultimately November, we started to rally. That rally went uh, all the way through into 2012. So if you look at this move that we've had here recently, we had this pullback, we started this recovery, and now we've consolidated a bit. I actually had pullbacks there in 2011. You can see after the initial move off the lows, we had a big pullback like we just did now. And we recovered that, and it was just a slow, steady grind to the upside. So that correlation still remains in effect, something that really is different this time around, though, is crude oil, which has been falling off a cliff. And I've been talking about this for many, many moons here. If you draw a trend line across, there's a 20-year chart. Support has been broken. Okay, support's been broken many months ago. And we are breaking down. You can see it even yesterday. What a dramatic move we had on Friday. The OPEC came out, disappointed the market, and look what happened. <laughs> We had a complete collapse, and I guess what OPEC is just, it, 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 you know, it's a, one of those gunfights at the, at the corral where they're just trying to outlast those shale producers and say, hey, you know, they're going to go bankrupt before we are. And what does that mean uh, as far as energy? Uh, you can see it's pulling back as well. Even yesterday uh, was down over 1.5% at the open, down to uh, lows that we haven't seen in quite a while. We have to go back to September uh, before we bounce, but energy is shaping up for a move under 60. Go figure, it's unbelievable. Uh, so if you want to look at bankruptcies looming, we talked about the same time last year. Uh, there's oil in those bankruptcies, and that, that's not going to be good for the high-yield bond market. A lot of the high-yield uh, bond market is energy-related names. So we'll see how that plays out. And, and if you look at this pattern here for XLE, look at a short-term pattern here that we've seen since the lows in, in, in September. This looks like some sort of a topping pattern. Uh, we have a left shoulder, a head, a right shoulder, and we're breaking down. The neckline was right about here. If you draw a neckline across, it actually goes to the resistance that we saw in September here. So you look for further downside, we can get back down to the lows that we saw in September. So that's something to watch, and that might weigh on the market going forward. Uh, a couple other stocks we got to look at, or uh, ETFs, the gold miner ETF, GDX, breaking out here. And you can look, we had a similar type pop to the upside in October. I know a lot of people are looking at the bottom here. And support has been over this 13 level. We're breaking to the upside. Can we get back up to 17? That remains to be seen, and I think a lot of it's going to uh, rely upon the U.S. dollar index. Mario Draghi did the e Federal Reserve a favor as the Fed comes in uh, in two weeks, talking about interest rates and maybe raising for the first time since the Industrial Revolution. Uh, we have, what, a 75%, 80% chance. That's what the market's pricing. If the Federal Reserve raising rates, you know, look, Mario Draghi did the Federal Reserve a favor because I think this looming breakout of the U.S. dollar is ultimately ultimately, ultimately uh, going to be bad news for the stock market. So we've got this U.S. dollar collapsing as the euro spoke, spoke, spike. <laughs> All right, folks. <laughs> this video is getting a little long in the tooth. Uh, but if you look, the U.S. dollar index completely collapsed. Uh, we'll go back uh, five days. And uh, the euro, on the flip side, was gaining strength, uh, a move that even Goldman Spectacular did not foresee. <laughs> so it kind of shocked the market a little bit, but the market was able to recover the losses from that day, at least for the equity in the, in the indices, not yet the U.S. dollar, which has kind of bounced and just pitter-pattered around here. So we see if we break out back over triple digits, you look again from the long-term time frame. I've been talking about this for a while. You can see the breakout's already underway, and actually we're starting to come back to test this trend line. You draw a trend line from the highs that we saw earlier this year, right at the start of the year when we broke over 100 initially, a 12-plus year high. And uh, you draw another trend line here as support. We're coming back down to it, and I think ultimately we're going to rip higher to about 110. We're not going to see, a, we're going to see a level we haven't seen since, gosh, a lot of you were in diapers. No, I don't know. Uh, it seems like a long time ago. It's been 12-plus years. All right, UPPOptionMillionaires.com. We still have some earnings trickling in next week. Trickling in, I believe, FedEx or UPS, one of those corporations reporting earnings, a handful of them. Just one other uh, ETF to watch is IWM, which kind of lagged yesterday. If you look at I, I, IWM, only up 1%. So now you could start to look at I, w, I, w, I, w, I, w, I, IWM as a possible topping pattern here. 
And if you go back to earlier this year, we hit 129 before pulling back to 107, a $22 reversal. All right, UPB, your option, millionaires.com. We're 10 minutes into this video. 10 minutes you will never get back in your life, but I hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you in the chat room at optionmillionaires.com. Take care.